So these are some of the things that we need to do to care for our microscope. Now, before we leave this but a particular specimen, let me quickly show us how to actually place a slide on the microscope so it can be used for viewing microorganisms. All right. So this is what is done. Okay. Look at this slide here. Now, this is what we refer to as the slide of the microscope. This particular thing here, this glass substance here is the slide. Actually, this is it here. This is the slide that I'm talking about. This is how it looks like this. You can see it's like this. So we have something dropped on it like this, like a medium that will help to hold the specimen we are trying to view under the microscope in place on the slide. So we use the slide on the microscope. Now it is going to be placed directly on the uh, aperture that permits light from the illuminator into the stage of the microscope. You can see, so this here that I have here, this particular thing here, this thing here, and this hand is over, uh, this hand is covering it under the other side here. Those are the stage clips. So they will be used to hold this slide in place under, uh, on the, uh, they will be used to hold the slide in place on the stage. So it will be able to permit light from the illuminator through the aperture so that the uh, objective lens will be able to view the objects on the uh, slide. That is how we use the microscope. So that is that about that. So our next specimen is going to be the specimen J. So specimen J is our next specimen. Specimen J, which is the slide. The slide. Yes, we were told to give a plain slide. So that is our next specimen, specimen J. So what is the slide? I just made mention of it now. So a slide is a, uh, a glass rectangle, a transparent, a transparent rectangular glass. rectangular flat glass it is used to place objects that are to be viewed objects that are to be viewed on the stage Of the microscope so that is how you place the slide on the microscope to be able to view the object so our next specimen like we said is going to be so we said the specimen J it is used to it is used to place objects that are to be viewed on the microscope it is used to place objects, majorly microorganisms, objects that are to be viewed on the stage of the microscope. On the stage of the microscope. That is what the slide is actually used for. So this is what we are talking about here. So we can see the slide here. So this is how it is being placed on the stage of the microscope. So we have it being placed like this, having the uh, the anchor between this uh, the the clips of the stage. You can see it here. So these are the clips. With this. We have one clip here, and on the other hand here, under the hand, we have another. On the other side there, rather under the hand, we have another clip there that will be used to hold the peg or the that will be used to hold the slide firmly on the stage of the microscope so that we can have the lens lowered on the uh, di uh lowered directly on the part where the substance that is to be viewed is so that is what the slide is so 
this is actually what the slide looks like you can see it here this is what it looks like this is another this is a slide and this is another slide now in holding the slide we hold it by the side here this by the side this place is here that i'm holding you put one thumb you put your thumb here and on this other side here a finger that is how the slide is being held and then here be very very neat before putting your medium on it or your holding medium you need to clean it very well make sure it is free of any impurity you drop your sample there and then the holding medium that is what that is about this is another example we can see now here so we can see that there is liquid being placed on the slide here the liquid serve as the holding medium so it will not allow whatever you're to check or to view under the microscope to fly away particularly if it is uh, dust like in nature so it will be used to hold it in place while you view it under the microscope that is uh, that about the specimen uh, J so the next specimen we want to talk about now is going to be the specimen N specimen N is this uh, specimen N is the next specimen we're talking about and that is pigeon pigeon is the next specimen we're talking about so what do we need to know about the specimen N now specimen N like I've said is pigeon it's a uh, scientific name is Columbidae we have its scientific name to be Columbidae Columbidae is a scientific name. Now, let's quickly see uh, its classification. Let's quickly look at its classification. We have the kingdom to be Animalia, as we know, because it is an animal. We have the phylum to be Codata. We have its class to be Apes. Yes, we have the order to be columbiforms. Then we have uh, its phylum, sorry, its uh, family now, its family to be the columbidae. And it is from this that we have its uh, scientific name so what do we need to know about the pigeon yes they are in the same family with the doves yes the doves are also referred to as the columbidae so they are in the same family same family with the doves yes and doves are uh popularly known as particularly the white doves we see them as uh uh organisms signifying uh peace or purity yes that is what is uh mostly uh, uh assumed then they possess stout body this they have they, are, they, they possess stout body with short necks and slender bills possession of stout body possession of stout bodied Possession of stout bodied short necks. Okay, let me stout body short necks as well as slender bills. Slender bills. Yes, that is what they, they feed majorly. They feed on seeds, on fruits, as well as plants. They feed majorly on seed, food, and, and plants. 
Oh, they are also referred to as oviparous organisms because they lay eggs. Yes, they lay eggs, so they are referred to as oviparous organisms. And when their leg, their eggs are laid, they incubate them for 14 to 19 days. The incubation period, the incubation period is for, uh, let's say, 14 to 19 days. They, they, hatch, they, they incubate the eggs for that long, and then when the eggs are being hatched, then they also give care, maternal care. They give maternal care to the young ones for about for about twelve to eighteen days. For about twelve to eighteen days. Yes, that is how long they can care for their young ones. Yes, they possess scales on their legs. Possession of scales on the legs. Yes, and these scales are primarily for insulation. They are for insulation to prevent them from uh, cold or when they land on electric cables to prevent them from getting uh, uh, electrocuted yes so those are part of the characteristics that they have yes also they have uh the hind limbs possession of hind limbs hind limbs with digits with digits and nails at the end with digits and nails with digits and nails at its ends yes both limbs the four limbs and the hind limbs they have digits and they have uh, nails on them also they have different colorful feathers yes different possession of different colorful feathers uh, the contour feathers the plume feathers the uh, uh, all of the types of feather the quill feather the, the fire plume feather the quill uh, the contour feathers and the rest of those all of those are found on the pigeon as well then they have beaks Possession of beaks. Possession of beaks. And their beaks are used for picking seeds. The beaks are used for picking seeds. Picking seeds and fruits. So that is what we need to know or what we have to know about the... Uh, about the pigeon so this is what the pigeon looks like let's see yes this is an example of a pigeon yes this is how pigeons look we can see that is how the pigeon looks so this is another example of a pigeon a labeled diagram of what the pigeon looks like so you could be asked to draw you can see it this is how it looks so uh, know this very well understand this very well because you could be asked to draw and if you are asked to draw it will be advisable that you know how to go about drawing the diagram so this is what it looks like so we have the diagram like this so please let us uh familiarize ourselves with the diagram all right our next specimen now is going to be specimen Sorry, what the specimen we talked about just now is specimen K, not N, please. This specimen is supposed to be written specimen K. That's an error. So let's uh, rectify that. Specimen K. 
So the next one we need to look at now is specimen uh, L. Specimen L is the one we want to look at now, and that is a gamma lizard. A gamma lizard is the next specimen that we want to look at right about now. So what do we need to know about a gamma lizard? Let us quickly see. It also has a scientific name and it is with uh, what we know it is called a gamma a gamma. Yes, it is called a gamma a gamma. So let us see its kingdom Animalia its phylum is codata. its class reptilia then its family its order its order is squamata its order is squamata its family is agamidae Its family is Agamidae, and then the genus is Agama. The genus is Agama. So that is uh, its uh, classification. So let us see uh, the things we need to know about it. So it has, uh, most times they are small, or uh, they have small, moderate size, uh, long tail. They are small, moderate size organisms with long tail. Small. To moderate size, moderate sized organisms. They have long tails, possession of long tails. Also, they are insectivorous. Yes, they are insectivorous, meaning they feed. They are carnivorous organisms, but feed majorly on insects, insectivorous organisms. They are insectivorous organisms. Yes. Uh, the male agama in display have brightly colored uh, head. The male agama, when in display, it has brightly colored heads. Uh, and this is done when it is caught. Well, the, the, okay, let me put it this way. The, the agama lizard usually have brightly colored heads. Particularly when it is uh, uh, portraying terri uh, territoriality. Yes, when it is showing off, it has beautiful colors. When it is calling for a mate, it also portrays beautiful colors. But these colors are not as bright. Uh, the, 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 the colors are not bright enough when the lizard is being threatened. So male agama in display have brighter colors than when it is caught beaten by other mates or when it is alarmed okay let me not say colorful let me just say brightly colored bright color when in display then when it is caught, now when it is caught, threatened, beaten, threatened or beaten, by other animals or meat, or when it is alarmed or when alarmed so all of these are things that can cause the color of the agama lizard to be uh, to diminish yes so this is an example of what the agama lizard looks like you can see this is what the agama lizard looks like you can see the head of it this is the the, the head of the agama lizard with yellow or uh, orange color 
not yellow orange color and we can see the body as well so this is how it looks so that is how a gamma lizard look so let us see so the females are oftentimes uh of less color than the male species females yes contrary to popular belief that the agama lizard is the male lizard no it is not always so agama lizard is a species of the lizards now the, the females are less colorful females are less colorful than the males the females are less colorful than the male species the males of the species the females are less colorful than the males of the species and then they are original farm uh, forest dwellers they are original forest dwellers originally forest dwellers yes that is they were found or they actually live in the forest so the reason why we have lizards in our environment right now is because we have encroached into their territory or their territory we have encroached we have uh, burnt bushes and cleared grasses and so we have uh, dominated their uh, colony and that is why they are now found living or dwelling amongst uh, humans so they are originally uh, forest dwellers then they possess long powerful hind limbs yes possession of long possession of long powerful hind limbs yes and these hind limbs help them to run which helps them to run To run fast as well as leap swiftly under alarm and leap swiftly when alarmed yes when they get in contact in contact with or come in contact with a threatening situation they they make use of their limbs to run so their limbs are very very powerful and it helps them to run and leap fast they are they are now they are diurnal organisms yes diurnal organisms sorry for that they are diurnal organisms meaning that they are day dwellers day dwellers or they live or they are more active during the day hmm? most active in the day yes so they are diurnal organisms contrary to the toad that we discussed earlier on that we said that they are nocturnal organisms yes the uh, they, they, they have high tolerance to temperature so they can tolerate high temperature high tolerance to temperature high tolerance to temperature temperature of about of about 38 degrees celsius yes when the temperature is about 38 degrees celsius they can tolerate it but when it becomes higher than that they seek shelter before they seek before seeking shelter when temperature increases when the temperature is higher yes so uh the males establish dominance by nodding uh, their head by weaving by displaying their colorful bright uh, colors and that is how they express uh, express territoriality yes the males exp establish dominance The males establish dominance or territoriality of 
or territoriality by nodding by nodding weaving as well and then display of bright colors display of bright colors so these are some of the things that we need to know about the agama lizard so we can see this is a diagram of the agama lizard now let us see this is what a diagram a labeled diagram of agama lizard will be if you are told to draw and label this is how it is going to look you'll be having here the head and in the head you have the nostrils the bulging eye the eardrum the nuchal crest which uh it is found directly uh on the back close to the neck and then towards the back of the of the uh lizard you have the cloaca towards the tail here towards the tail we have the cloaca we have the powerful hind limbs the four limbs as well which are uh, possess uh five digits and claws on them or claws or nails as the case might be so that is uh what we need to know about the lizards so this is another example of the lizard so you can actually uh, get to view them see uh, different uh, examples of the lizards so to be able to aid your understanding of the topic now the next specimen we have to talk about is specimen M that is our next specimen and that is the rat rat is the next specimen so what do we need to know about rats? That is what we want to quickly look at right about now. So let us quickly see its botanical name or sorry, scientific name is, we call it the Rattus Rattus. Rattus Rattus. That is its scientific name. So let us quickly look at its classification. Uh, yes, it also belongs to the class, the kingdom Animalia, kingdom Animalia. The phylum is Codata. We have its class to be Mammalia. Its class is Mammalia. We have the, the we have the uh, order to be Rodentia. Rodentia because it is a rodent. We have a genus now to be ratus. So that is where the uh, scientific name uh, emanated from. So ratus ratus. So I'll be looking at this particular one that I called ratus ratus. That is the black rat. That is the uh, black rat. We have different types of rats. We have the black rat. We have the brown rat. Okay, let me just give us their uh, botanic, uh, their scientific name. For the brown rats, it could be asked for different species. For the brown rat, its own botanical name is, we have it called Rattus. We have the, uh, the brown rats called Rattus novegicus. Let me write it here. Sorry. Rattus. Novegicus, and if it is the white rat, now we also have the one that is called the white rat, or the one that we popularly called the albino rat, the one that is used for laboratory experiments. That one is called the Rattus Novegicus. Domestica, yes, because it is uh domesticated, that one is particularly domesticated. So, what do we uh need to look at into uh this particular uh rat called the uh, the rodent? So, i uh, just generalizing now for all of the characteristics that I'll be talking about, it goes across all the specimens that I have, uh, all of these species rather that I have here the brown rat, the red, uh, black rat, and the white rat. Now, there are various uh, sizes from uh, medium to large sizes. They have varying sizes.
from small through medium to even large and they have long tail they are long tailed they have long tails yes they are long tailed uh animals they are rodents so they exploit human food yes okay let me quickly say this they are slender with pointed heads yes slender with pointed heads with pointed heads yes and large eyes large prominent eyes thinly fold ears yes large prominent eyes large eyes and then prominent thinly fold hairs thinly fold hairs thinly fold ears so that is uh the rats we have for the we are uh, they, they they are moderate uh, uh they have moderately long legs they have moderately long legs and long sharp claws moderately long legs moderately long legs with sharp claws yes they are bald soles yes their feet are bald bald soles or feet bad soles or feet on the hand limb yes with fleshy pads with fleshy pads yes also they are uh, most times we have the uh brown rats to be bigger in size than the black rats they are bigger in size and they have thicker fur than the black rats yes the brown rats the brown rats are often bigger or larger in size With thicker for the hair on them thicker for than the black rats than the ratus ratus than the black rats. So these are some of the characteristics that you need to look at or know about these uh, uh, particular organisms. They are mammals. Yes. Now they exploit human food. They exploit their. Yeah, okay. Let me quickly say this. They are. All right let me let me start with that they exploit human food resources eating and contaminating stored grains and killing poultry yes they ex uh, exploit human food resources eating and contaminating Eating and contaminating stored grains. Stored grains. Yes, those are some of their uh, effects. As well as killing poultry birds. Yes. They are also responsible for the extinction of some smaller mammals. Okay. Also responsible for the extinction or eradication of some smaller mammals. Yes, they are responsible all uh, for the eradication of some smaller mammals. How how do they do that? One of the reasons is because they are vectors of diseases. They are vectors 
of some diseases diseases that affect even man among humans diseases among humans including food poisoning including food poisoning yes so these are things that we need to know about the rat the ratus ratus so let me quickly show us a picture or some pictures of the rats yes this is an example of what the rats look like yes this is the white rat the one that i refer to as the ratus nuvegicus domestica yes this is the ratus nuvegicus domestica and we have other ones like this one here this is the brown rat we can see it here you can see the brown rat this is how it looks you can see it uh, as I've enlarged it now, this is the brown rat. So this is the, the ratus nuvegicus. So that is the brown rat. We also have the black rat. Now let me quickly show us how it looks when it is labeled. This is a labeled rat. So you need to understand how it is labeled. You can zoom into it and look at the labeling, the eyes, the uh, external nares, and the rest of those, the long tail, the legs, the thorax, the abdomen, the, fore, the femur, and the rest of those. So please let us take note of that. So the next specimen, which is going to be our last specimen for today, is going to be specimen N. Specimen N. That is our last specimen, and that is the uh, tilapia. Tilapia is our last specimen. Tilapia is our last specimen, so let us quickly dive into it and discuss uh, all that needs to be uh, known about it. So let us see. For the tilapia, we have uh, its uh, scientific name to be Tilapia spamani. Tilapia, let me put it here. Tilapia Tilapia spamani, that is its botanic or uh, its scientific name. So let us look at its classification. It is also from the kingdom Animalia. Yes, the phylum now is uh, uh, okay. The phylum, yes, the phylum is from Codata. Then the class now, the class is Actino. Let me put it here. That is the class Actinopterygio. Actinopterygio. Let me erase this so I will write it properly so you'll understand. Yes, Actinopterygio. Then we have the other. The other other now is Chichlide. That is the other, and uh, sorry, the the chichli formis. Sorry, then the family is the chichli day, and then we have the uh, genus to be tilapia. Genus now is the tilapia. So that is its classification. So we need to understand that. So let us quickly see. Tilapia is, is a freshwater uh, fish. A freshwater fish. It is found mostly in the freshwaters. Freshwater fish. Inhabiting shallow waters. Inhabiting 
inhibiting shallow waters e.g. rivers ponds lakes and the rest of those so that is where we find them they are less or of they are very very uh it is very very in fact almost uh impossible to find them in brackish water less often found in brackish water uh they are more suitable or suitably found in warm waters they are more suitable found in warm waters than in cold waters more suitably found in warm waters found surviving in warm waters than in cold than in cold waters yes they can live up to 10 years they have a long lifespan can live up to 10 years and they can weigh as much as and can weigh and can weigh up to 10 pounds they can weigh up to 10 pounds yes when they are fully grown yes on the healthiest uh, source one of the healthiest uh, source of protein one of the healthiest source healthiest source of protein to other animals yes particularly man yes now let us quickly look at some of the characteristics the possess skills the possess skills streamline bodies fins possession of skills streamline streamline bodies yes they also have skills possession possession of uh, I said they have possession of uh, fins yes okay let me put it this way their skills Okay, let me just say it. Their skills are there to uh, to insulate them, uh, prevent them from uh, cold, as well as getting electrocuted, particularly when they land on electric cables. So that is what the skills do. Then the streamline bodies help them to be able to uh, swim freely in in waters. It makes it possible for them to swim and navigate through waters. Then their fins aid their swimming as well. So they have fins and different types of fins example they have the littoral fin they have the dorsal fin they have uh, the ventral fin pectoral vein fin ventral pectoral tail and the rest of those so we need to look at we need to understand that also they make use of gills they use the gill system for respiration make use of gills for respiration yes they are also they are referred to as oviparous organisms they are oviparous organisms because they lay eggs they are oviparous organisms because they lay eggs yes now they have high resistance to diseases yes that is why they have uh, vectors that can carry many diseases they have high resistance high resistance to several types of diseases high resistance to different diseases 
so they don't easily get uh uh they don't really get infected by majority of the diseases that they they carry they grow very fast and uh, okay they are commercial advantage now their commercial advantage they grow very fast let me put it this way commercial advantage one grow fast they grow very fast also the diet of readily abundant algae and zooplankton feed on algae they feed on algae and zooplankton yes and they are very very adaptable they are very very adaptable they are easily adaptable they can easily find themselves in uh in a very very different environment and they easily survive there so they have high adaptability let me put it that way high adaptability yes yeah, so they can easily adapt to scenarios and conditions around them they are omnivores they are omnivores and they depend on uh age and also they are cannibalistic yes they are omnivores which depends on age the very big ones or the mature ones have the ability to feed on other uh fishes they can feed on other fishes so they are omnivores and then they are also cannibalistic so when they find themselves in environments that are uh, makes it impossible for them to actually get food they can start feeding on themselves so they are omnivores and cannibalistic so i said they are uh for the uh, commercial advantages i said they grow fast yes so that is why some people actually uh cultivate them they are also used uh, as a uh, biological control of some uh waters waters where you have a uh, breeding of some uh like you have the breeding of mosquito larva and the rest of those you can introduce uh, spir uh sorry you can introduce tilapia into the waters they, they feed on this uh algae and plantains that are there so the lava of the i mean the air uh, the lava of the uh the tilapia actually feed on uh the algae then the fingerlings of the algae of the of the tilapia rather feed on the zooplankton the larva feed on algae the uh fingerlings feed on zooplankton while the mature fishes the mature tilapia feed fish feed on other smaller fishes and that is why we refer to them as omnivore and when they find themselves in an environment where there is lack of food they become cannibalistic start feeding on one another so that is about the specimen m so if you look at this these are some pictures of what the specimen m look like yes this is an example of tilapia fish you can see it this is another example of tilapia fish i try to get us as many examples as possible so this is, is a tilapia fish you can see its streamlined body and it has scales on it yes it has scales on it even uh, uh it has scales around it then uh if you are told to draw and label this is how the label or the diagram will look when you are drawing and labeling so let's get familiar with all of these uh diagrams familiarize yourself with the diagram and get to know it better so this is how far we'll be able to go with our our, our study our lesson please endeavor to subscribe to our channel if you have not done so and please share this uh page across to as many as you can so they can as well get uh to understand some of the things that we discuss here please try as much as possible to like the page also we are expecting your comments drop your questions your comments in the comment section thank you very much and god bless